Burden Mode EX Plus was the hardest Plants vs Zombies mod I've played at the time of recording, and it's been well over a year since I've beaten all 69 adventure levels. So I thought it would be nice to do a little throwback and compile all the adventure levels into one big movie for you guys to watch, so sit back, grab some food, and enjoy. Welcome to Burden Mode EX Plus, a mod that makes Plants vs Zombies much harder. This is an overhaul of the Burden Mode EX mod, making the game even more challenging? This mod was made by an anonymous modder and has no official name in English. I decided to go with Bruder Mode EX Plus since it's built upon Bruder Mode EX. Most plants and zombies are changed in Bruder Mode EX Plus. This mod increases zombie spawning by 4 times compared to vanilla. After all, PvZ1 was never really a game of any challenge when you could beat it without using some producers for the entire adventure. What makes this mod insanely difficult is the zombie variants. Each variant is a new zombie introduced in this mod, a subtype of their main zombie and does different things. They also need to follow the same spawning rules as the zombie they are a variant of. Most of the variants are outright unfair, like the letterhead zombie. It spawns every 1 in 9 basic zombies. It has double the health, walks super fast, and ignores all plants. Seems like a completely balanced addition to the game. Flag Zombie now has the ability to steal your sun whenever it is present on the lawn, draining it very fast. If not dealt with quickly, you might have no sun left to deal with the rest of the zombies, so we gotta watch out for them every level from now on. Thankfully, we can beat level 1-1 since it's short and we only had one lane to deal with. Now in level 1-2, I'll be using the 50 second stalled strategy again. This level has a special rule set to try and make you plant free sunflowers. We can simply ignore its suggestion and only plant 2 sunflowers, so it won't spawn zombies until 50 seconds have passed, giving us much more actual sun to work with once the zombies start coming. However, there's a slight issue here. The Letterhead variant is already trespassing all our defenses because of its higher health compared to a basic zombie. One Peace Shooter is not enough to kill it, and we just have to let it walk past our defenses and straight to the lawnmower this level. And now for what's to come, another Letterhead zombie comes in the middle row. Because we don't have a second Peace Shooter, it just walks past our sunflowers, past our Peace Shooter, and then, um, we lost on literally level 1 too. It's literally only basic zombies. Are you serious right now? So to beat level 1 too, while doing the 50 second wait strategy, I have to sacrifice one lawnmower to a Letterhead zombie first, and then get two Peace Shooters in that row as fast as possible. Repeat that for every lost lawnmower, then pray the final wave doesn't have two letter heads in the same row, allowing us to win with no lawnmowers left. Mind you, this is only basic zombies and it's already really bad. Conehead zombies are introduced in level 1 free, many new variants. Coneheads have two variants on top of their base zombie, and they're arguably worse than Torchlight zombies. The first one is the Gramophone zombie. It's a regular conehead zombie, except it heals all zombies around it in a 3x5 tile area by 100 HP every 6.5 seconds. Which essentially means you're not killing it with a pea shooter, because pea shooters only deal 20 HP every 1.5 seconds. Which also means we're forced to spend cherry bomb. The second one is the dancing conehead zombie. It's a regular conehead zombie, but spawns 4 backup dancers upon death. They spawn backup dancers no matter where they die. The strategy is about the same as the previous level, but with access to Cherry Bomb now, we want to save them for the Conehead Zombie variants. We then proceed to beat this level also with no lawnmowers remaining, using a Cherry Bomb to fully eliminate the final waves, letterheads, and Coneheads. 1-4, now we have 5 rows. You see the problem here? We have literally only pea shooters to defend all 5 rows. This is horrendous. Because we need to spread out our pea shooters in 5 rows, this means we can never get enough defense to kill letterheads in a single row when we are trying to deal with coneheads. Oh yeah, and there's also this problem with the dancing conehead variant that will be a headache. <laughs> That's correct! If they get destroyed by a lawnmower, a backup dancer spawns literally in your house, so we can never let them reach the end of the lawn. It is fair to say that this level is tedious to beat as it's already taken me 40 minutes to not just straight up lose to letterhead zombies spam in some way or another. The winning attempt involved sacrificing lawnmowers to stray zombies in the first few waves to gain a sizable resource advantage to get enough pea shooters. During the process of getting two pea shooters every row, it's a gamble on whether letterhead zombies go where we want them to go. Thankfully, none spawned after all my lawnmowers had already been sacrificed for their early game resource advantage, so we actually managed to beat this level. As for Walnut Bowling, the level is pretty much identical to in vanilla except with zombie variants. You should do absolutely fine, let's move on to level 1-6. Level 1-6 introduces the Potato Mine and Pole Vaulting Zombie. Potato Mine now costs 50 sun because, well, take a look at this. 
It activates instantly, which means it's essentially Squash 2.0. Squash has always been one of the best plants in vanilla, so this will be helpful for the rest of the game. Full Vaulting Zombies, on the other hand, don't have variants. They only come in their base kind, with the exception of their new ability. That's right, when they jump over a plant, Pole Vaulters will instantly destroy that plant and add a Gravestone, which also adds an extra zombie in the final wave because of the Grave Ambush. These are no joke before we can unlock Grave Buster and get these Gravestones out of the way, but for now, we have to live with it. Just like its predecessors, Brutal Mode EX Plus allows any zombie to be spawned from gravestones during ambushes. We lucked out on this level only having to deal with a few more weak zombies, so time for 1-7. 1-7 is significantly harder because it is twice as long as 1-6. Gravestones spawned by pole vaulters have a larger impact, damaging the structure of our defenses for not just a few waves. With multiple gravestones blocking a bunch of tiles, it makes it nearly impossible to build proper defense, so we are forced to find another way to deal with pole vaulters other than sacrificing. As you may have noticed, Snow Peas now have a 22% chance to shoot Blue Faming Peas, which do double damage but still slows down zombies. The problem is with not setting up a defense fast enough for the large groups after the first lag. Once a pole vaulter infiltrates, it's like a domino chain effect where we slowly get crippled. The first breakthrough by the zombies leading to the second breakthrough, and so on and so forth until we just lose the game inevitably to the lack of space. What's the key in beating this level? Well, it's actually with the pea shooters. Pea shooters receive the buff, which you might not have noticed. This hasn't been significant since every other level so far has been a one flag level. But pea shooters actually now gain attack speed over time, up to shooting 50% faster. Usually in the short level, it doesn't matter because pea shooters barely gain any extra attack speed. But in a longer level, this becomes pretty noticeable. Instead of planting more sunflowers early on, we need to plant more pea shooters early on to let them gain more attack speed going into the first flag. This means they are more cost efficient the earlier they are placed, making them worth keeping into the later part of the game, and also more space efficient. And with that one simple change in our strategy to not be greedy on some early game, we handily beat level 1-7. Chompers are introduced in 1-8, which now devour faster based on the health of the zombie it devours and gives back some sun at random chance afterwards. Aside from Chompers being introduced, we are also accustomed to the new Bucket of Zombies variants. Buckethead's first variant is a zombie with its head replaced by an umbrella leaf, which spawns a bungee ambush upon death. It's just like the target zombie from Brutal Mode EX, so I'll call it a target zombie for short. However, it has a slight difference compared to before. Oh, hell no, man. What the so yeah, now even bungee ambushes can spawn any type of zombie, including Gargantuars. Putting Gargantuars in the middle of the lawn sounds pretty fair to me. Oh yeah, and take a look at this football zombie. What? The other buckethead variant is possibly even worse. The Pumpkin Zombie can add buckets to other zombies with no protection like a King Zombie knighting zombies. The Pumpkin Zombie can even add buckets to Flag Zombies and Green Door Zombies, and it has no limit to the amount of zombies it can knight. The Pumpkin Zombie also has more health than usual, allowing it to survive any instant kills. It can even add a bucket to itself when it loses its bucket. On top of that, it also heals surrounding zombies and itself every 6.5 seconds like a Gramophone Zombie. Bucketed Zombies are very dangerous. And thankfully, this run I was able to stall enough to the last wave, and take a look at how brutal the Buckethead variants combined really can be. Level 1-9 is fairly simple with the new leap of Repeater being more space efficient than Pea Shooters. Repeaters have a 33% chance to shoot 2x repeats in diagonal directions every shot. Conveyor belt levels are pretty much unchanged outside of zombie variants, but with the masses of Pea Shooters, you should be able to obliterate everything the game sends at you. Nighttime is when things go bad pretty quickly. Even though Pumpkins are actually buffed to have a 23% chance of freezing any zombie eating it, the main problem are the buffed zombies. I'd like to enlighten you with the newspaper zombie. Visually, it appears to not have changed at all, but this is a... you guessed it. What is different about the newspaper zombie, you ask? So we need to kill a newspaper zombie without making it plow through all our plants. You need to use a potato mine behind your puff shroom since the newspaper absorbs an instant kill. 
And because of us needing a potato mine for every newspaper zombie, well, it's a pretty rough level since we can't keep up with newspapers with potato mines low recharge. On top of that, Brutal Mode EX Plus adds Conan zombies to this level for some reason, which drastically scales up the difficulty because of our lack of access to cost-efficient mushrooms. Conans are a massive issue here alongside newspaper zombies, especially the two variants which require extreme measures to be dealt with. Grandma Boone zombies require potato mines as well, since pup shrooms have too low DPS. Dancing Conans also spawn way too many zombies and we get overwhelmed quite easily. Not only Conans are a problem, but letterheads are also literally unkillable during nighttime. How on earth are you supposed to kill these with mushrooms? Because of the newspaper zombies, basically all your non-instant kill plants have become irrelevant at this point and you're forced to just use instant kill plants and kill everything. If you can't keep up with the horde, too bad, you're not going to win when you eventually lose to the wall of newspaper zombies. There's no reasonable strategy other than stalling with streams to pick off the stray zombies and walnuts to slow down zombies, then use a potato mine or chopper. Just plant down as many sunflowers as the game could allow you, then use cherry bombs, potato mines, and choppers appropriately. Allow fruit zombies like early letterheads or several backup dancers in a lane that is congested to thin out the crowds a bit and make use of your limited lawnmowers. With good enough luck, you should be able to get through this horrible level given that there aren't too many letterhead zombies or newspaper zombies. Level 2-2 Coneheads, Newspapers, Bucketheads. You see the problem here? The zombies here are all extremely tough to beat, especially they can't come immediately in the early game, forcing us to use instant kills to deal with them without many other options. We need a potato mine for almost every zombie in that sense, and it becomes kind of impossible to actually even stay alive with Bucketheads now also being in play. Plus, sacrificing lawnmowers is no longer an option in the early game because we need to survive for two flags, and something like this, free newspaper zombies, is an instant loss for us. What's even more impossible to stop is the damned buckethead variants. Whenever a target zombie comes, you're screwed. You have to overcommit in defending free random zombies and essentially lose the game because you no longer have enough sun to defend the rest of the threats anymore. And if you're unlucky enough, you'll have to encounter gargantuars during the night time on the third wave of the level. The most effective way to defend off the zombies is with Chopper Spam. With its fast recharge, we can plant Choppers as a consistent instant kill while using Walnuts to stall zombies out. They are indeed effective because they finish digesting quicker if they devour a weaker zombie, allowing it to still be fine to defend even if it hits a basic zombie in the way previous. For a more extreme case scenario that Bucket had spawned twice in the same row, we obviously have Walnuts and Potato Mines that are still available for backup. The very last few waves of the level are a huge problem. Since there are so many zombies jammed together, it's super hard to defend everything with just choppers. Plus, zombies that spawn more zombies become more of a problem when we have multiple target zombies and dancing coneheads creating threats in the middle of the lawn. Or, you could just lose to one extremely angry grandfather if you're not careful. Oh yeah, did I mention that pumpkin zombies can also knight zombie variants? Well... This process of either losing to the early game swarm of zombies from possible to defend without instant kills, or losing to zombies that spawn more zombies repeats itself again and again. It's actually ridiculous.
The way they beat this is rather stupid and unintuitive. Instead of using cherry bombs, repeaters helps you more in this level. You end up stabbing yourself in the toe more often than not with cherry bomb because of it to likely activate a newspaper zombie, losing you the game. Repeater is better to pick off any stray zombies such as backup dancers spawned by dancing coneheads or just lanes without newspaper zombies. Then, as soon as newspapers come, we have the control to remove the plant that could activate the newspaper zombies rage mode and allowing to our choppers to just do their job. Sounds extremely stupid to spend 200 sun for just killing a few zombies, but when the alternative is losing instantly, it actually isn't that stupid after all. After 2-2 is done, we can buy our 7th slot to make our journey a bit easier. We are also introduced to the screen door zombie and fume shroom. Fume shroom is back in its former glory of brutal mode, costing 100 sun but allowing it to hit all zombies in front of it with unlimited range. Now screen door zombies can pretty much be said to be a whole new zombie. Instead of its screen door absorbing straight attacks, it deflects all straight attacks. And these attacks can in turn damage your own plants. Might as well just straight up call them jester zombies at this point. Screen doors have a variant, holding a tall nut. Their screen door can still deflect straight projectiles, but cannot be pierced through even with fume shrooms or catapults. This means we need to use fume shrooms to knock off their screen door if we want to kill them with raw damage for now, so it's best to spend instant kills on them. The rest of this level is relatively simple. 4 inch fume shrooms will fire down all screen doors and basics and coneheads will be killed by combining puff shrooms. Same as before, spend potato mines, cherry bombs or choppers on letterheads, conehead variants, and tall nut screen doors. As for level 2-4, it's a whole different story. With two flags, the masses of tall nut screen doors become a much larger problem since we don't have enough instant kills in the economy. Plus, pole vaulters are back to ruin everything as per usual. Thankfully, we now have Brave Buster, which returns 50 sun upon busting a grave with a 1 thirds chance of giving you back 25 more sun. It's extremely difficult because of the pole vaulters. They are so difficult to deal with using fume shrooms, since we can't use other straight shooters thanks to the screen doors. The only way to survive is pray that not too many letter heads or pole vaulters come, and make sure to keep spamming Grave Buster at all times. Spend all your instants on gramophone zombies and tall nut screen doors, and walnuts are surprisingly good here for tall nut screen doors. And that's about how to beat 2-4. Gotta be extremely lucky against the letter heads and pole vaulters. Remember how 4 times more zombies spawn compared to in vanilla? Well, in level 2-5, that is also the case, except for the fact that gravestones... Okay, it can't be that bad, right? Unfortunately, the zombies in this level are simply too plentiful to deal with. The only strategy is to click faster. That's literally not strategy in my opinion. So, I pulled out the oldest trick in the book for whack a zombie, and that's the auto clicker. You pretty much have to use one to beat this, I don't see how otherwise. Unless you want to hurt your own fingers and go to the hospital. Well, anyways. So, time for football zombies. Surely, they can't be that bad, right? Football zombies now have the health of a gargantuar, and they can no longer be killed by any instant kill plants and gain immunity to other plants like madness shrooms and choppers. Hypno shroom is nice here, because it's the only plant that can instantly kill football zombies, plus we get a super strong defender in return. Wait, what? A first football zombie? Didn't we literally just deal with two of them? Yes, we did. And here's a fourth football zombie for you. Bruh. To beat this, you need to use Walnut. They are better here because they offer a second way to deal with football zombies, which is with Chompers. Hold on, but didn't we just say that football zombies are immune to Chompers? And didn't we already see that they were last video? Yes, we did. However, Chompers can still damage the football zombie at a fairly good damage rate, similar damage rate of a repeater, even if they can't directly kill the football zombie. We can plant two chompers like so and put a walnut in front of them to stop the football zombie, then pile on the damage of chompers. Pairing this with Hypno Shroom should get you through this level's limited amount of football zombies. Level 27 in comparison is much easier because of the buff scarity shrooms. They cost 75 sun, but now shoot two spores instead of one. Even though they are less cost efficient, they are far more space efficient and allows us to output far more damage compared to before. Even though Scarity Shroom's shots get deflected by screen door zombies, it's not that big of a deal because Scarity Shrooms now have significantly increased health. With Scarity Shrooms and Walnuts now being defensive plants that allow us to stall out football zombies, they are significantly less frightening. Especially the fact that Scarity Shroom also allows us to pile on lots of damage at an affordable price against football zombies. Then, same as last level, keep using Hypno Shroom against football zombies, and you should be fine against them. I beat this level pretty easily with full range fume shrooms. 
Level 2-8 introduces the Dancing Zombie, which has two variants that are fairly uncommon, but its base zombie is already one of the most dangerous zombies in the game. At first glance, Dancing Zombies seem to do the exact same thing, but it now spawns a full group of four backup dancers even if only one backup dancer dies, flooding the lawn very quickly. And if you let Michael Jackson summon a third group of backup dancers, well, you have to be prepared for this. Dancing zombies now summon and ambush every first time they summon a new group of dancers. That means one extra zombie every gravestone, or bungees ambush on the roof. Naturally, you would want to try to kill the dancing zombie immediately then, but then this happens. When Michael Jackson dies, its backup dancer behind it continues its legacy, and then that zombie becomes the Michael Jackson. How the actual hell are you supposed to deal with that? And yes, if you kill the now Michael Jackson, the backup dancer behind that can continue to be a Michael Jackson, so this loop can pretty much go on forever. The best way to stop that from happening again is to use an ice cream to stop the dancing zombie from summoning another group of dancers to break this loop. After surviving that madness, the final wave just had to spawn a target zombie from the gravestone, which spawned a football zombie, and we lost. I mean, this is just... Come on, man. The best way to deal with dancing zombies is potato mine. They have a larger explosion area increased to 3 tiles, so they can clear out all backup dancers behind the Michael Jackson. This is the Angry Dancing Zombie variant. Returning from Brutal Mode EX, walk straight past all your plants at a very fast speed with even more health than a letterhead. Okay, and this Trophy Dancer spawns unlimited groups of backup dancers, and still summons Grave Ambushes every third time if it summons backup dancers. Yes, this is actually a zombie. Learning from our lesson last time, we are going to use instant kills to instantly kill that Trophy Dancer, and now we're good to go to beat this level. With a Cherry Bomb, that's level 2-8 out of the way, and we unlock a 150 Sun Doomshroom. Let's plant this Doomshroom and see what it does. Yes, you are seeing this correctly. Doomstream is now buffed to a full map range. Not sure why they decided to buff the best plant in the game, but I guess that's something to use. 2-9 is relatively underwhelming in terms of difficulty because we already have Ice Shroom and Doomstream, which are both pretty broken and can deal with masses pretty easily. 2-10 is pretty much a joke because it's pretty much the same as in vanilla, and now with the more busted Doomstream, you can clear the whole lawn whenever you want to. Doomshrooms still can't kill football zombies though, so you still have to use Hypnoshrooms on them, unfortunately. 3-1 is probably the most pathetic level in the entire game. Only basics and coneheads? We're skipping straight to 3-2. Okay, and the next level has... Oh wait. Why are you running? Why are you running? Football zombies in the daytime mean we can no longer use Hypnoshroom against them, so we're forced to kill them with raw damage. However, this is conflicting since there's also newspapers. With newspaper zombies also in play, this means any straight shooters are going to activate its rage mode. Wait, but we're supposed to defend football zombies as well. I suppose you could see where this is going. With the threat of both football zombies and newspaper zombies, this level becomes a huge pain to deal with, especially when the bucketheads create extra problems for us to deal with. We really don't have the capabilities to handle both footballs and newspapers, especially since Squash doesn't instantly kill either of them anyways. And we're just so limited in the amount of resources we can spend, we always just barely lose on the final wave. There's no other strategy other than just spam choppers and spam walnuts and spam your instant kills to try to kill as many football zombies as possible. Thankfully, Squash is slightly better than before now, with a 27% chance to stay alive after squashing its target and allowing it to activate another time. It's a very intense session of trying to pay as much attention as possible to which row needs a refreshment of walnuts and use of instant kill plants. Keep as many lawnmowers as possible and stop newspaper zombies with potato mines or walnuts so you have the lawnmowers in reserve in case of buckethead letterheads. With that out of the way, we can move on to level 3-3. Three, three. The free pewter now causes 25 more sun, which shoots both flaming and snow peas, which is kind of odd to me. Why not just make it shoot snow peas like in Bruno mode? Snorkel zombies are thankfully not that threatening in their base variant. They don't have many changes except moving faster in the water, like the original Brutal Mode Snorkel Zombie. 
On the other hand, we have its variant, the Lily Fat Snorkel Zombie. No, it doesn't do the thing that you think it will do, so watch carefully here. They submerge in the water, and then never come back out of the water. They just don't. I didn't know zombies became smart and started ignoring all the plants that were blocking their way. Wait, so how are you supposed to kill them? Great question. You aren't. It's spend an instant kill or bust. Is that not just completely fair and balanced now? Since this level only has two flags, I was able to get away with just squash and cherry bombs for lily pad snorkel zombies, and also spent both my water lane lawnmowers. So, level 3-4 is a free flag level. You see the problem here? Well, yes. First of which, we need to somehow get enough instant kill plants which can actually target Lily Pat Snorkel zombies. What is even more problematic here is the combination of newspaper zombies with pole vaulters. To deal with newspaper zombies, we need chompers or walnuts to blockade them. However, pole vaulters will simply jump over the walnut and destroy them. So, we would have to use long range pea shooting plants which in turn, activate the newspaper zombies rage mode. Well, we've gone full circle and there's our huge problem. Wouldn't just getting walnuts after pole vaulters die be a good solution? Well, sounds easier said than done because this is a free flag level which has a high zombie density. Meaning, we basically cannot afford to just keep replanting walnuts over and over again because we basically have multiple newspapers and pole vaulters every wave. Pole vaulters will just clear the way for newspaper zombies and then we will lose to them rather quickly. This problem is essentially unavoidable. You can't even use chompers to kill newspapers because pole vaulters are completely immune to chompers before jumping, so chompers are very often killed for free. This difficulty is just too much to deal with and the combination of these two zombies is truly something evil. With only 8 slots to work with, we really don't have many options. Remember scaredy shrooms that have higher health but now cost 75 sun? They are now just fast recharge wall plants since their recharge speed is still the same. We can bypass walnut's limitation by paying a premium on scaredy shroom. This is actually a valid strategy as scaredy shrooms fast recharge means we can keep replacing any lost wall plants from pole vaulters without losing to newspaper zombies. The rest of the strategy to kill snorkel zombies is to keep tangle kelps behind our scaredy shrooms since we need them to exclusively deal with lily pad snorkel zombies. Tangle Kelps are ideal for the Lily Pats Norco Zombies because they can now pull down a total of 3 zombies for the cost of 50 sun. This makes them far more reasonable since we don't need to actually spend the Tangle Kelp all in one go, and it can defend for a prolonged duration. It's pretty much the only plant that can be used for Lily Pats Norco Zombies which is in single use, allowing us to stock these up easily behind our Scary Shrooms. However, with us switching over to Scary Shroom, they have less health and cost more than Walnuts. So, we need more sun to support this strategy. Tangle Kelp is excellent for this, since it can pull down free zombies. We can simply stack up our sunflowers in the water and just pre-plant some Tangle Kelps. Two Tangle Kelps will be capable of defending several waves of zombies off, buying us the time we need to get sun from sunflowers before getting long-term defense. 
Snow peas are also very important in this strategy as they slow down newspaper zombies' eating speed, giving us more time before we need to replace a scary shroom. And only then can we just barely squeeze out a win on this level. There were so many close calls even in the winning attempt, like right here. With this monstrosity, we finally unlock the shop and the rest of these few levels will be much easier than this. Level 3-5 is a very easy level. It's pretty much identical to in vanilla since the plants here did not receive major changes that would alter most of the strategy here. Even though football zombies have double the health, this still shouldn't be a problem given the masses of walnuts you accumulate over the span of the level. The only new thing you have to watch out for is Lilypad's Nurkle Zombies, which will require a Cherry Bomb since they're the only instant kill plant in this level. Just don't carelessly spend all your Cherry Bombs and lose the level is my brief advice. Level 3-6 introduces the Zamboni, and oh boy, is it one of the most stupid zombies in this mod. Firstly, it no longer slows down over time and speeds all the way to the house. Zombonis will now actively freeze all plants that are close to it with exceptions for a few fire-based plants. Like, literally, anything next to it. This freeze effect causes any frozen plants to become abilityless, and it will never defrost. The frozen plants will just sit there until it gets eaten, doing nothing else. Zombonis basically rule out any use of close-range plants and render them pretty much useless. It also freezes instant-kill plants, so you can't even kill it with squash. Thankfully, 3-6 is a short level, so just using our limited supply of instant kills that still work against Zombonis, which are Jalapenos and Potato Mines, we get ourselves to 3-7. And by the way, Jalapeno now has a 13% chance of freezing all zombies for a few seconds. It's rather insignificant because the chance that it happens is rather small, so you can't rely on this as a part of your strategy. 3-7 is comparatively definitely harder because of the addition of Storkle Zombies as well. This is probably overkill, but I got the 9th slot to bring an extra instant kill this level. I gave up on Snow Peas since they don't slow down Zombonies anyways, so just invest in repeaters. I bought in Scary Day Shroom not only for Snow Peas Zombies, but also Spike Weeds. Spike Weeds now cost 25 for a stun, with a small chance to briefly stun any zombie that it damages. Looking back at this now, I'm not really sure why I didn't choose Tangle Kelp here and instead used Jalapeno, Cherry Bomb, and Squash for the Lily Pet Snorkel Zombies. It worked out anyways at the end, and I was able to beat the level easily by just spending Spike Weeds to instantly kill Zombonies early on, then with just Repeater shredding everything up. 3-8 introduces the Dolphin Rider Zombie. Its base zombie remains the same, with a variant that spawns one in every three Dolphin Riders. The Bald Dolphin Rider jumps over three columns at once. This may arguably be worse than the original Brutal Mode configuration, where all Dolphin Riders jump three tiles, because they can now in turn, attack two different spots after leaping. And again, because this level is rather short, you can get away with just using Squash, Carry Bomb, and Tangle Kelp to eliminate all the Dolphin Riders with not much problems. 3-9 is far more difficult compared to 3-8, but Tall Nuts are here to save the day. One of the best plants now, they regenerate health passively and also damages zombies that eat it. Not only that, they still block off vaulters and can survive multiple hits from gargantuars. Sounds like an amazing plant. Well, because it is. We can simply plant it down, and it will damage incoming threats and kill them, regenerate its health back, and continue doing so. It's a pretty overpowered plant that we will take advantage of. The rest of the level is more of the repeater spamming and now, with Torchwoods as well. Torchwoods now stack not once, not twice, but up to three times in Brutal Mode EX+. Tall Nuts also continue to function even when frozen, dealing damage and healing itself, making it not that poor of a choice paired with Spike Weed in this level. Torchwoods are also immune to Zomboni's freezing, so it's ideal to put them in front of your Sunflowers this level. With Tall Nuts blocking Pole Vaulters, Spike Weeds eliminating any Zombonies and Repeater Torchwood spam killing the rest of basically everything, this level should relatively be a breeze. I'll just skip over 310 briefly, the tactic is essentially the same as if you would play this normally with the exception of planting Tangle Kelp behind your Tall Nuts. With buffed Repeaters, Torchwoods, and Tall Nuts, this level should be easily beatable even with fairly unoptimal play. With that, Fog Levels begin now. Level 4-1 introduces us to the Sea Shroom and Jack in the Box Zombie. Unfortunately, Sea Shroom is still slow recharge, so it's kind of pointless to use. Jack in the Box Zombies, on the other hand, have two variants. Um, except none of them spawned in 4-1 because it was too short to even show up. 
its base zombie is still the same as in vanilla, so because none of its variants showed up, we were able to easily beat 4-1 with just Scary Shroom and Puff Shroom Spam. 4-2 is the real deal, with football zombies back for more, but wait, why is this planter 150 sun? Planter now clears fog from the whole screen, but more importantly, its brand new effect is to shorten the attack speed for any attackers adjacent to it in the 3 times 3 tile area by half. Yes, you heard that right. It is double the damage for 8 plants and this thing only causes 150 sun. This plant is totally not just completely overtuned and way too good for its cost. With Scarity Shroom now being boosted to the firing speed of Gatling Peas by Plant Turn, football zombies are much easier to deal with when you pair them up with just one instant kill like Squash. Squash and Potato Mob will chip down the football zombie to an amount of health that is straight up just killable with our Scarity Shrooms. Pretty neat. The two other Jack in the Box zombies variant literally did not show up at all this level as well. I will just brief you over how they work. The Ice Jack in the Box zombie stuns all plants on the lawn for 3.5 seconds, disabling any and all abilities they have when it explodes. The Potato Jack in the Box zombie resets the cooldown of all seed packets back to default, so it could be detrimental if you were relying on a lot of instant kill plants. And there you go. Level 4-3 is pretty straightforward, we just have to let our lawnmowers go in the final wave, and that's this level done. Level 4 free. With Balloon Zombies now introduced, we have to include Cactus to counter them. Balloon Zombies now survive free Cactus shots while in the air before dropping down. They also move much faster while floating, forcing you to make a response much faster than usual. And as you just saw, Cactus now costs 175 sun, but shoots 2 spikes instead of 1. 4 free only has one flag, so only very few balloon zombies came, and the final wave was just easily clearable once again with a single Doom Shroom. Level 4 4 has the return of Dolphin Riders, and it has two flags, which is more of a headache for us. For the early game, just like any other fog level, Scarity Shroom complemented with Puff Shroom and Mushroom Instance are basically good to secure you all the way to the first flag. Blover now costs us 125 sun, but now deals a bit of damage and inflicts a slowdown to everything on plate. It also pushes back everything in its lane back like the Hurricane. Blover's damage only pops the Balloon Zombie's balloon instead of outright eliminating them now, so be cautious with where the Balloon Zombies will land. Trying to beat this level with Scarity Shroom is also pretty bad. Since Dolphin Riders jump 4 tree tiles, Scarity Shrooms are often unable to shoot because of nearby Dolphin Riders. With Bald Dolphin Riders, they completely paralyze our Scarity Shrooms as more of them keep coming every wave. Efforts to get our Scarity Shrooms back up and attacking are pointless. Eventually, you'll just lose all your defenses in the water and die to the swarm of Dolphin Riders. I instead chose Tango Kelp, since we can't easily afford Tall Nuts late in daytime, so the better solution is to bring an efficient answer to Dolphin Riders. We can replace Cactus with Tango Kelp. They are super overpriced to act as damage output, and Blofer is simply better utility-wise compared to Cactus's pathetic damage rate. Tango Kelps are super good here, especially against multiple Dolphin Riders. Dolphin Riders don't leap over Tango Kelps, so even one Tango Kelp can kill off both variants at once. With level 4 for done, we are going to unlock several more new options in the shop. And you'll see why in particular I had to point this out, because the rest of Fog is not going to be that hard. Level 4 5 is Phase Breaker, which is even easier than before because of all the buffed plants, so here's a time lapse of how easy these levels are. 4 6 has Digger Zombies, and I'm not going to use Split Pea. Well, I have Cattail in my lowdown. It costs 25 less, and it's still an excellent choice because it's actually better than before. This all-purpose plant is basically the replacement for any early game plant that is still great into the mid-game, and its buff is somewhat incredible and probably unbalanced. Yup, Cobb Cannon Shots. I think this plant might be slightly too good. Okay, jokes aside, the Cobb Cannon Shot actually has no splash and only deals about 10 times of a regular Cattail Shot. Regardless, that's a big enough of a buff since it shoots them 3% of the time. With some math, we can figure out that it is an overall 27% damage buff, which is absolutely nuts that it also costs less. Digger zombies basically stand no chance anyways because cattails can easily shred through them, so we don't need to run split pee. Just like any one flag level, Doom Shroom to seal the deal and we're moving on to the next level. As for 4-7, the difficulty is pretty much a joke at this point. 
If you remember, Planter now doubles the attack speed of plants around it for 150 sun. So yes, we can just plant a planter down, and it would act as basically planting a second cattail, bypassing the cooldown on upgrade plants easily. Of course, any subsequent cattails would also be twice as strong, so it's fair to say that the level has been completely cheesed by just cattail and planter alone as our damage dealers. The level is a piece of cake with just cattail spam and obviously using the two broken mushroom instants. One notable threat is the screw digger zombies. They dig until the second, third, or fourth column and pop up to walk towards the left, threatening to take your lawnmower within seconds. Thankfully, Cattails will simply retarget to the screw digger zombie because it automatically hits the zombie closest to the house. Target zombies may be a huge threat with Gargantua spawning in the water, but you should be fine between the lawnmowers and pool cleaners you still have in reserve. 4-8 is also super easy. Even though Pogo Zombies are much more dangerous now, it's a one flag level, so just use Garity Shroom complemented with Puff Shroom to beat the early game. Pogo Zombies now jump actually faster if there are plants blocking its way. It will stop for a much shorter duration between each plant, making it much more dangerous. I supposed that I could feature Split Pea in a relatively easy level. It now shoots Flaming Peas forwards and two Snow Peas backwards, but still only costs us 125 sun. And of course, we Doom Shroom, and 4-8 is easily done. 4-9 is, again, a repeat of using Cattail with Planter. Usually, Cattail will struggle against the high health properties of Bucketheads, but we now have Magnet Shrooms. Magnet Shrooms are very good now. A 25 sun cost increase, but it has full on range, and so it works great with Cattail's also global range, cutting down the work Cattail's have to do by a lot. It's refreshing to see Cattail completely demolish down everything attacking at double speed with Planter and Magnet Shroom taking out everything. Pogo Zombies have some pretty rare variants, but they will come up in future levels anyways, so let's move straight on. I don't bother showing you the whole of 410 anyways, since it's also super duper easy. It's pretty much every conveyor belt level, just the exact same as before. We're now on the roof world. Normally, any one flag level should be extremely easy and should not be difficult at all. But, as we know it, 5-1 is traditionally difficult in Bruno mode. With no access to flower pots or roof cleaners, suddenly the early game becomes extremely difficult as one single dancing conehead will ruin three rows of your flower pots almost instantly. Then, you realize that any letterheads in the early game are threatening to instantly lose you the game because you have absolutely no roof cleaners here. This is when it all goes bad. From roof levels onwards, all your early game plans are pretty much just obsolete at this point, and you should just simply rely on instant kill plants to defend against the hordes of zombies. It looks absolutely ridiculous that I'm using Potato Mine, Chopper, Talnut, and a Squash for just one wave of zombies, but it's simply impossible to save your flower pots otherwise. Attacking plants are just too expensive, and you have to indefinitely stall zombies out with a variety of instant kills until your sunflowers are plentiful enough to afford them. Bungie zombies are now approaching, and even they have variants. The first more common variant is the wheelbarrow variant. It doesn't steal plants, but stays on its target indefinitely. It also has more health, acting as a meat shield and blocking you from planting in a 3x3 area around it. Jalapeno and Doomshroom are the only insta-kills that work against it, obviously. The final wave of roof levels also have bungee ambushes, which are actually the same as target zombie ambushes, meaning they can also just spawn any zombie like a gargantua. With a full column of taunts and literally 5 instant-kill plants, we are able to pass this level, and it only gets worse from here with the instant-kill spamming. Oh boy, you will see how bad. And with me saying that the instant kill spamming only gets worse, on level 5-2, I picked the cabbage pole, but it's pretty much just entirely useless because it won't get planted. There is literally no chance to plant down a cabbage pole because of the swarm of zombies in their early game, it's pretty much undefendable if you're not just planting tall nuts and choppers. Bucketheads have too much health for cabbage poles to deal with, and pole vaulters just move too fast. This is the only reasonable option. The entire early game is just all instant kill plants, and yes, this will be a training theme for pretty much the rest of the game because all the attacking plants are just too weak. The strategy is planting a tall nut in every row to let zombies die from eating it, and then make sure the tall nuts stay alive by using other instant kills and let them heal back up. And you have to do this for the second half of the level as well, pretty much. 
You can maybe afford like free cabbage pulse, but the majority of your spending will be on instant kills. With a whole lot of cherry bombs, tall nuts, potato mines, squashes, chompers, and jalapenos, we're able to just barely beat this level. Colonel Pulse now lob a cop cannon shot if they did not lob a single butter for 15 times consecutively. Using math, the chances of that happening are about 1.34%, so it's extremely unlikely. Ladder zombies are now here, their base variant is still the same, but their new variant, the shovel zombie, or I'd like to call it, the unplants your plant variant, is infuriating. Yep, literally just unplants your plants. Nothing can stop it. It even unplants your instant kill plants like they're nothing, completely negating any defensive plants and their purpose. The rest of the level isn't that much more other than typical zombie spam. Colonel Pulse aren't really the best option for these massive hordes if you look at our roof cleaners. Thankfully, Plantern is overpowered enough that even just 2 or 3 Colonel Pulse every row alongside a plethora of instant kills is enough now to get through this level. Stay on high alert, because the final wave bungee ambush might even get you. Gorgantors can spawn directly on the 4th column, so be rather cautious about them. This is why you need to set aside about 300 sun for instant kill plants at the final wave for situations like these. And with several instant kills, that secures for the win in 5-3. Okay, and with ladder zombies out of the way, time for... Level 5-4. This time, not only with just football zombies that have double health, but also only half the sun compared to in hard mode, and overpowered zombie variants like shovel zombies. This ain't going to be pretty. Trust me when I tell you that I tried every strategy on this level. Every. None of them worked because this level is just that stupid. Not only are you suffering from football zombies super high health, you're also suffering from the pogo zombies variants. I'll just let you watch this. Yep, across the whole lawn within 8.5 seconds. That is a new record for the Zombie Olympics. You're not just getting bullied by their variants, even normal pogo zombies suck to deal with. The only strategy that works on this level is actually just Doomshroom spam. Yeah, because the football zombies have so much health, pretty much nothing can kill them. As you can see, I have no attacking plans in my loadout. Hold on a second. Gold the Magnet? Okay, I sort of lied, because Gold Magnet now does damage. Well, it doesn't seem to right now, but when the zombies walk between two Gold Magnets... Yes, it's an electric current now and also slows zombies down. I used them to make sure my Tall Nuts stayed alive in the three middle rows while using Pumpkins to protect the two Gold Magnets. And as you just saw, Pumpkins now cost 200 sun and explode upon death whenever it is not killed by a vehicle running over it. So yes, it even works against our Gorgantuar. Gold Magnets, even though they can kill Coneheads, can't deal with Letterhead. You'll have to stick with using instant kills against them. The next important part of the puzzle is to have Magnus Room active in the strategy. Magnus Room can't counter football zombies, but it's important to counter ladders here. If we don't use Magnus Room to get rid of ladders, we will almost certainly die to football zombies that no longer get blocked. The Gold Magnet is essentially not useful after the first lag and can only be used to defend off various early game threats where an tall nut is on recharge. The last pogo zombie variant is the garlic pogo zombie, which is not actually that threatening here, it just switches lanes repeatedly but reverts to a basic zombie if it loses its pogo stick. And now you have your column of tall nuts set up, you just plant pumpkins to add protection to damage tall nuts and let it heal back up, then just spam doom shrooms. Just keep planting more Doomshrooms to kill everything and kill the letterheads with your squashes and potato mines. That's the whole strategy. Doomshroom will get you through this level, and from here on out, we have our first real take on what is we will call from now on, the dump strat. Just Doomshroom every zombie and win. You know your level is just completely unbalanced when the only solution is to use overpowered Doomshroom which can instantly eliminate every threat off the board. After we cost more damage to our own roof than in World War II, 
we are able to finish the level pretty convincingly with actually no roof cleaners lost. 5-5 five five is very easy because of buffed pumpkins. You have basically infinite explosives because of pumpkins, it should be pretty hard to lose when half the plants are cherry bombs. Let's skip to 5-6, shall we? Catapult zombies are now coming, and their variant with a pole vaulter as its head is identical to its base variant, but hit the plant in the front instead of the back, spawning half the time. However, besides that, they receive one extremely annoying change that makes them frustrating for this level when we have no access to Umbrella Leaf. Catapult zombies now have unlimited health. Yes, unlimited. It will not die to regular attacks until its basketballs run out, it also shoots faster the less health it has. You can only stop it lobbing more basketballs only if you spend instant kills like squash or cherry bomb on them to explode them or squash them out of existence. Without Umbrella Leaf, this level becomes a nightmare because of all the basketballs that are literally unblockable. And we have to eat the full capacity of each catapult zombie. Restarting the level, this time with more cautious decisions to reserve the back and front columns for defensive plants. Obviously, tall nuts and walnuts are the best options here. And also, just use planter. It's pretty much an auto-include plant no matter what as long as you have an attacking plant. It's just the definition of too good. It's space efficient, it's cost efficient, it's the most efficient way to use any attacking plant, it's just the best way to provide safety to your own plants as well as keeping more of them further back. And that's about 5-6 done. 5-7 includes ladder zombies and bungee zombies, which make cabbage pulled far less desirable, especially that they don't do quite enough damage for a free flag level now. So, we need something that does more damage, and I remember to look at this one plant right here. Starfruit now costs us 175 sun, and it pierces through zombies. I'm sorry, what? Yes, it pierces through zombies. This plant is certainly not going to be completely busted to clear out hordes. And the best part is, you can even use this on roof levels because of how it now pierces, and then combine this with planter. Oh boy, you're going to shred up everything. And with two groups of starfruits, you can sit back, relax, and watch it kill everything completely and making the game look like a joke. 5-8 introduces the Gargantuar, but honestly, they aren't a threat at all. With Starfruit spam, Gargantuars are virtually a non-threat when they die after walking 3 tiles forward. The Mari Gold also makes it easy for us to counter Gargantuars. They now cost 150 sun. Being an instant-use plant, it cuts the health of zombies in the 3x3 area down to 1 fourth. As for 5-9, it's pretty much just like 5-8. You do the exact same strategy as the previous level, but with Magnus Room to make sure you don't accidentally lose to Jack in the Box zombies. It's probably unnecessary to use Magnus Room, but whatever, we have extra slots to spend anyways. Okay, future RCCH here. Obviously, I was saying how broken this strategy is, but at some point later on in the series, we're going to need to update this game, which nerfs Starfruits by removing its ability to pierce through the roof. So, I suggest you use a different strategy that I will show next time, if you're going to try to beat this level yourself on a newer version of the mod. This is future future RCCH speaking one year later. I never ended up making a video about this, but your first hint is hello world. There are two other hints hidden in this video that will lead you to a cash prize, so keep watching. Let's move on to the final level of the game. Five ten is actually just entirely unplayable on this version of Brutal Mode EX Plus, due to a bug that is fixed in a later version. So for now, we're just going to skip this level using Cheat Engine. Wait, but isn't this the last level? Welcome to World 6 of Brutal Mode EX Plus, which adds its own extension of Night Roof levels, completely different to those of In Brutal Mode and EX. The levels are even more difficult compared to In Brutal Mode EX, so you have an additional 100 starting sun to help out. It's common for levels in World 6 to require several hours to beat. During nighttime, there's very limited resources to work with, so you can't just plant 4 instant kills to kill the zombies. We will have to use mushrooms the best we can. There's only 4 pre-planted columns of pots, mushrooms planted on the 4th column get blocked by the roof, so we already need to spend an instant kill to kill any coneheads. 
As for basic zombies, you either have to spend 25 more to get a flower pot, or you need a whole extra puff shroom to kill them. Some notable interactions with the roof are fume shrooms can pierce through them without any problems. This makes them very effective against the low health basics and coneheads. Plus, the Umshroom is a must-have on this level anyways because we need to deal with screener zombies in level 6-1. Albeit being the introductory level to the 6th world, this is a regular 2 flag level with screen door zombies, football zombies, and pogo zombies. With football zombies returning, I suggest using both potato mine and squash so you can use both to kill off the football zombies. Otherwise, you can stall it out using tall nuts. Pogo zombies and letterheads are still completely unkillable, so it's also pretty standard to just lose all your roof cleaners to them early on. To deal with them this level, I suggest Fume Shrooms with Planter, which should do enough damage to kill them off. Otherwise, Tall Nuts will block the Pogo Zombies. As for Letterheads, Colonel Pulse will target them since our Fume Shrooms clear out the low health zombies and then stun the remaining higher health zombies. These two stalling options should give enough time for your Fume Shroom to recharge and nuke all the football zombies as necessary. That's about all it takes to beat the first level of Night Roof. Now, you may be wondering, where are the new zombies, right? They will come later in the second half of the world. The next level is a bit more difficult. By a bit more, I mean a lot more. It has dancing zombies, pole vaulters, and balloon zombies. Naturally, you would see those zombies and say, they have relatively low health. So just using starfruit or fume shroom should deal with them, right? Early pole vaulters in nighttime are even more difficult to deal with now with the roof condition. All our options on roofs are fairly low damage and need to be spammed to be effective. Take Fume Shroom or Starfruit. They're essentially useless if you only have a few of them. Pole Vaulters force out any instant kills every time they come, so you don't lose your main fire power. And by doing so leaves you with very limited resources to deal with the increasing amount of zombies, and eventually, the density just increases too much and they'll overwhelm you. Dancing zombies are especially dangerous for us in this format because leaving them alive while killing off their backup dancers with starfruits only makes them spawn more often. And yeah, I really would like to not deal with a bungee ambush when they summon for the first time, because then all hell breaks loose on what can be sent. The better solution is Talnut, because it stays alive and continues to defend against future pole vaulters, but the issue is still that you don't get enough firepower. If we're not spending sun on instants, we're spending it on tall nuts. And that just means not enough firepower to beat the hordes of zombies and we get overwhelmed again. If you try other instant kills like Blover, the same problem arises again. You simply cannot afford enough firepower ever because of the dang pole vaulters. Even with Plantern, the early game is simply too unforgiving to allow you any kind of good firepower setup. It's so stupid and unbeatable. The solution is the most stupid way to beat this level. If it's completely impossible to set up any amount of actual firepower that will be capable of killing the zombies, why bother having any? I gave up using Fume Shrooms because they just ended up being a liability since I was spending most of my sun on just instant use plants and stalling plants anyways. I settled down on just planting a ton of sun production, so that I could spam Blover for every time I feel like any zombie like Letterheads are threatening my roof cleaner. Normally, Doom Shroom spam should not work because after a Doom Shroom, a new wave spawns immediately, forcing defense again. But that doesn't really matter if you have four columns of sun producers that lets you indefinitely play more and more blowvers to push zombies back. Usually, four columns of sun producers would limit where you can plant your firepower too much, but we don't care about that at all since we're only planting instant kills anyways. All you need to do is just keep playing blowver to knock back any frightening zombies, and then when Doomstream is back for recharge, you can plant that. It's just that simple. With this absurdly dumb strategy, the only fitting name of this is of course the dumb strategy. I suppose now you can see why full screen Doom Shroom is necessary for this game to be beatable. Moving on to the next level, this level has... Unlike basic zombies, we only need to spend one Puff Shroom to break its newspaper. Pre-planting a potato mine behind your puff shroom should deal with it, but you're still losing a flower pot for every newspaper zombie. Doom Shroom will be your best friend once again, but make sure all the newspapers are broken or have a follow-up instant kill against the newspaper zombie. However, tall nuts are now available to us, an option previously not unlocked yet. 
They do damage every time a zombie bites it, so even if Newspaper Zombie eats it at hyperspeed, Taunus still do the same amount of damage to them. The most logical strategy is once again, Taunus to stall everything out and repeatedly cycling into Doomshroom to kill off the Walnut Zombies in this level. The support plants are Magnus Shrooms because of Digger Zombies and Kernel Pull as a bit more stalling to stop Newspaper Zombies. However, Taunus are not a free win. If your Taunus dies and you use a Doomshroom, um... Yeah, this level ain't so pretty either. Target zombies are also in this level, so you could really see how Doomshroom isn't even necessarily a nuke all button. Most levels have relatively resilient zombies that don't die to Doomshrooms. In this case, a Doomshroom cannot prevent a pole vaulter from the sky to replace your planter with a grave. Digger zombies are also changed the roof levels. They can damage certain plants like tall nuts and flower pots while underground. That's not necessarily a bad thing, it keeps the digger zombie in front of your tallnuts, so you can magnus shroom them later and pull them out of the ground. But it's definitely bad if you didn't get a magnus shroom early, as you can see right here. And yeah, I'm pretty sure Colonel Pult stalling is merely just completely useless because the zombie density is too high to deal with. The logic here is we can't really use anything but catapults to kill newspaper zombies because it triggers their rage mode if we use anything else, including fume shrooms or melon pults. However, the other consideration is that Colonel Pult doesn't actually do anything anyways because none of the newspaper zombies are dying. Is there a better solution to this level? If Colonel Pult isn't killing any zombies, we might as well just bring more instant kills. Chompers will take out one zombie from each row every wave to alleviate the stress on our tall nuts. They save us significant amounts of sun between the first flag and second flag when zombie density is not that high. It really helps break up the sun to use in the latter half of the level. Then, you pretty much just want to Doomshroom spam. Keep spamming the Doomshroom every time it is ready. And that's just how you beat this level. I'll be pretty interested to see if anyone has a more effective strategy than this, or as a matter of fact, is this level even possible without Doomshroom? I don't know, but let's move on. Level 6 force early game is entirely basic zombies, but that's not necessarily a good thing now. Basic zombies means there are far more letterheads in the early game. That means losing more roof cleaners early on. Usually, that doesn't make a difference, but in this level, it does. I'll explain more later. Pole vaulting zombies are in this level. Because they are the only other zombie that can spawn before the first flag, they come in much larger groups. Pole vaulters that simply come in a lane with a starfruit will kill your starfruit before your flower pot even comes back to recharge, causing detrimental losses. The second half of the level is just hell mode. We then have jack in the box zombies, bungee zombies, ladder zombies, and zombonies in the mix to make it worse. With the threat of pole vaulters mixed with nighttime, you just don't have enough starfruits to kill the massive horde of ladder zombies. And if you even make it past the first flag with a decent amount of starfruits, a single zomboni is enough to shatter all your hopes and dreams of winning this level. If you thought that was bad, this loss is even worse. First of which, introducing the third bungee zombie variant. An extremely rare one, but one that tops the charts for unfairness. the jack-in-the-box bungee. Literally drops a jack-in-the-box zombie straight on where it lands. Yep, and then immediately explodes. Well, um, this is certainly balanced. And the perfect storm of events follows. The shovel zombie paired with a zomboni in the row next to it, about to freeze up all my starfruits. Even when you try to live against the shovel zombie, it really does just unplant your plants. This level combines the most frustrating part of roof levels and it amplifies it to its best as zombonis roll down the roof to freeze everything in its path. Adding ladder zombies into the mix with pole vaulters creates an incredibly annoying dynamic where tall nuts become entirely useless anyways.
this level is beatable. The only caveat being needing to be extremely lucky on which lanes pole vaulters go. Yes, we are using tall nuts, and simply relying on pole vaulters to just go in the row with a tall nut. Essentially, you're simply relying on the fact that pole vaulters just happen to not target your starfruits, so they stay alive until the first lag. It's an extremely unreliable strategy, and you probably cannot replicate it anyways, but I got the time to play, so I just kept playing until the randomness was enough in my favor to move forward. The next part is having Matt Shroom, and I'm hoping that there's not too many jack in box zombies and ladder zombies, and that more pole vaulters or basic zombies spawn. You can't get enough tall nuts for every row or a sufficient amount of Magnus Shrooms, otherwise you have too little starfruits to kill the Zombonis. Just hope that you'll be fine and that's how I cheese this level. Oh yeah, you also have to spend all 10 slots on the plants that I'm using right now, so you don't have a slot for Umbrella Leaf. The way to counter Bungie Zombies is just... Also hoping that the Jack in the Box Bungie's variant doesn't spawn at all and... That the other Bungies don't steal too many important plants. It's just a full show of RNG Fest and hoping that you somehow survive their onslaught by just simply replaying the level to get more favorable spawns. Pretty ridiculous. And hopefully, yes, hopefully again, then if RNGesus is on your side, you'll be able to move on from this dumb level. Now, in level 6-5, we're in the Mushroom Garden now. Okay. Conehead, screen door, jalapeno, zombie, shouldn't be too bad, I think. Oh wait, only four seed slots. What? This level is not actually a choose your seeds level. You start with a cabbage pole that shoots at hyperspeed, and you have to control it using your up and down arrow keys, switching rows. You have to beat this level using one single plant. Yep, the early game is relatively easy and trivial, so no worries about that. But by the time we're almost at the first flag, you can see that our cabbage pole is struggling a lot to keep up with everything already. How do you even beat this? Notice we are getting sun for every zombie killed. You get 5 sun for every basic equivalent you are killing, and your cabbage pole upgrades to a melon pole when you hit 500 sun. You may also notice that the melon pole now lobs melons to every zombie in its row occasionally, being a 9% chance that it happens. What's the difficult part of this level? It's to manage your melon pole in the correct row to hit the most threatening zombie and save your lawnmowers, as you need all of them to beat this level. On my first attempt, we lost to just two football zombies. You may see it was an oversight to attack the zombies on the fourth row when I had bigger problems in the first and third row, which are the ones without a lawnmower, leading to my demise. Prioritizing where you need your melon pole to go is not the only objective in this level. You only have one plant to work with, so if it dies, you can't do any more damage. Jalapeno zombies will be the bane of your existence in this level because they explode at random, and if it kills your melon pole, I'm sorry, you'll have to restart the level all over again. <laughs> this combination of zombies also makes jalapeno zombies more threatening, because they are often faster zombies like footballs and dancing zombies protecting them from being killed. And even when you think you've won, you can still completely lose. It took a few more tries to beat this level, since I was mismanaging most of my lawnmowers and wasting them too early in the level. Losing too much early on at the cabbage pole stage will cause you to lose. It's mandatory to reserve as much of them as possible for the future when zombie density is way higher. The secret to winning is to get as many dancing zombies in the early game. Dancing zombies spawn backup dancers, which give you more sun when they are killed. This means that more backup dancers allows an earlier upgrade. This way, you'll lose less lawnmowers, getting the melon pole before the first lag comes is ideal. I could suppose that the developers intentionally had regen farming for us to have an easier time beating this. All of what I said before is still very important. Do not try to engage with jalapeno zombies, and prioritize on the rows without lawnmowers first with your melon pole. I made sure to use my free last lawnmowers just one or two waves before the final wave, ensuring the final wave is clumped to two rows. This makes sure melon pole gets more splash value in the final moments of the game, allowing an easy victory. You probably clicked on this video because of the title. I imagine some people are yelling at me right now, saying this is clickbait because I still haven't shown the titular character. For this next level, I'll let live RCCH take over the commentary. I don't know how many peace shooter opponents are gonna come, but yeah, I swear it's not gonna be good. 
Oh my god, are you kidding me? They- they count- They count as one basic equivalent. You're- you're kidding me. Um... Yeah, well, um... But this level is beatable, contrary to what you may think. Now, you would say, no way Jose, there's literally 4 Conehead Zombies first wave in nighttime. You're joking. The only way to kill 4 Conehead Peace Shooter Zombies first wave is to just protect one singular lane with a garlic at the start and line up all our sun production behind that garlic. We then sacrifice all our roof cleaners to simply not die first things first. How are you going to kill the rest of the zombies after all your roof cleaners are dead? Well, it's practically impossible to actually get any attackers on the board, so the solution is, once again, only using instant kills, but this level doesn't only have pea shooter conehead zombies. The long list includes catapult zombies, football zombies, gargantuars, and buckethead screen door squash zombies. Yep, those are also real in this mod. At least we now have a way to just survive the first few waves of the level deterministically. And then, it all falls apart when football zombies roll in. They require two instant kills to die, causing major issues in us just using Doomshroom because any football zombie incurs the need to spend an additional squash or potato mine. With this strategy, I was able to reliably get to the first flag every time and then immediately die to catapult zombies that move much faster. And I was not successful either. I then practiced over and over again trying to optimize my early game as much as possible, to plant my sun producers as quickly as I humanly can, and I was able to buy myself a whole extra row of sun producers. Unfortunately, this can only last me so long, as more and more football zombies pile onto the board and I just run out of instant kills to use against them. I tried using only one sun producer to save a slot, but that's not an option. If you don't use both sunflower and sun shroom, you will make enough sun to plant a garlic as protection. And then someone in chat reminded me of a plant that I previously completely ignored. We don't need to spend two instant kills on football zombies because Hypno Shroom exists. Hypno Shroom is perfect for this since the only zombie that matters for us is the football zombies. It's the most cost efficient solution and also helps kill off the pea shooter zombies. And now we're making progress. With Hypno Shroom, we're actually saving sun and able to get a third row of sun producers to complete our sun production setup to last the rest of the game. After setting up your third row of sun producers, the real challenge begins. Now, it's time to use your instant kills the best you can and use them as efficiently as possible. It's the most skill testing level I've played yet, and even with previous experience playing Bruno Mode and Bruno Mode EX, this level presents the toughest challenge I've ever faced. You'll be tested to the best of your ability to use Ice Shroom and Blover as efficiently as possible to stall until Doom Shroom comes back from cooldown. Blover will be much more important compared to Ice Shroom because of their fast cooldown, allowing you to constantly plant it to indefinitely push zombies back as long as you have sun. Blover is the only way for you to not completely die against Gargantuars, since for obvious reasons, they can't be diverted to the open lanes without sunflowers. In the midst of all of this happening, you still have to deal with the bucket at screen or squash zombies. Previously, we saw the zombie in regular Brutal Mode and Brutal Mode EX Night Roof. Of course, they are still impossible to kill, so you have to keep spending more flower pots against them to prevent yourself from losing too many sunflowers. The level at this point has become entirely just gargantuar spam. Your sun production is going to meet its demise, and it's time to really see if you've got enough sun producers or not. If you run out of sun, that's it, and the game is over. It means that the early game was not played efficiently enough, so you have to try again and use instant kills more effectively. This level is by far the most ridiculous level so far, and good luck to you if you wish to attempt this dangerously difficult level. You can now see why the change for Doomstream to full screen was necessary.
I'm not going to bother you with more fails. This is the one I beat this level. There's not much more strategy I have to talk about here. My best advice is that it will have to be up to the player to adapt to this level and create effective solutions on this spot against these massive swarm of zombies. Now sit back and watch as I do some insane micromanaging to beat this level. And the last, the final wave. Now, watch out. Since Doomshroom is not a free win on this level, so it isn't over yet. Especially when I see the newspaper zombie right here. Doomshroom, 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 Doomshroom. You out of here now? Okay, now what do you... Wait. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so we need this. And we need to somehow deal with the middle... Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, wait, we got... Nope, oh, we got Cherry Bomb. We got Cherry Bomb. Wait! No, we missed! You come come back over here. Oh, oh, come on. Squash? Yes! Let's go! <laughs> what the heck was that? What the heck was that? Oh, my gosh. Okay, and then we just do Shroom. And we, and we win. And we win. Sayonara. Level 6-7 froze back to 6-4, where their only zombie in the early game is basic zombies. But this time, the level is much easier instead of more difficult. This is because you now start with 5 columns of flower pots instead of 4 every level after level 6-6. Now, the first puff shroom you plant doesn't get blocked by the roof, making the early game significantly easier. The other zombies that can spawn before the first flag are just football zombies and dancing zombies, both of which are very easy to stop because they don't come in large quantities. Football zombies are easily solved by one tall nut. They count as seven basic equivalent. Only one of them can be spawned every wave, so we only need to defend one road at once when they come. Using double sun producers should also allow you to afford a plethora of starfruits and plantern to shut up the dancing zombies, with no threat of pole vaulters killing them. 6-7 is the easiest level of the entire 6th world in Brood Mode EX Plus thanks to the easy early game, albeit having 3 flags. This level also introduces 2 new zombies after the first flag. The Buckethead Gatling P zombie shoots peas in the spread direction, meaning they can reach all rows with its spread attack as well as deal a ton of damage to any row it's in. The easy solution is Magnus Shroom to remove its Buckethead immediately so Starfruits can kill them quickly. The only other metallic zombie in this level are ladder zombies, so there won't be too much interference disrupting our magnet shrooms. The tall nut zombie seems like it does nothing because it's nothing special other than just a huge chunk of health. It will constantly heal itself up, allowing it to absorb more damage. For every second you don't damage the tall nut zombie, its health will increase exponentially, faster and faster. This makes instant spam ineffective against them, which is why Starfruits are good to keep them healing slower since they are constantly getting hit by a star or two. Thankfully, Tallnuts can blockade them until we spend Doomshroom to make them not a very big threat. If Shovel Zombies come, you can just get a Squash, or Magnus Shrooms will remove its Shovel regardless. For the rest of the game, you just need to patch up your Tallnuts and there shouldn't be a chance Zombies break through. And easily, we're done with 6-7. Let's move on to the next level. Now, moving on to level 6-8, we have... Why are you running? Why are you running? 
The return of Conehead Pea Shooter Zombies. This level is almost a complete repeat of 6 6. More of this pain. Make Conehead Pea Shooters 2 basic equivalent for goodness sake. I still tried using attacking plants. I wonder to myself, why am I here still using attacking plants? You cannot tell me this is doable with a regular, normal strategy. If you haven't seen it, Conehead Pea Shooter Zombies count as one basic equivalent in this game, so they spawn as often as basic zombies but have the health of Conehead Zombies. This makes them essentially impossible to defend in the early game. Since this is a roof level, not defending is equivalent to losing your flower pots, so there's basically no chance you can come back to build up proper normal defense. The solution to beat this level is almost identical to the one used for level 6-6. We sacrificed 4 roof cleaners to protect one row of sun producers using garlic in order to stay alive first. Then, with those sun producers, we are only simply planting instant kills like Doom Shroom and Cherry Bombs as damage, while using Blover and Ice Shroom simply to stall zombies out. Any level with Conehead Pea Shooter zombies will have to be beaten using this exact same strategy again. They are just impossible to defend early game, unfortunately. Except, this level now has newspaper zombies and not football zombies. If you remember what happens after you spend an instant kill on them, Clearly, that was not the smartest use of Doom Shroom I could have done there. So then, of course, we should plant two instant kills in quick succession to kill a newspaper zombie. So, too bad I fought. So why not just hypnotize them like we hypnotize football zombies? Surely that would work against them, right? If there are too many newspaper zombies, you simply cannot survive the early game. It's just how it is. You're not defending 4 newspaper zombies scattered into 3 different rows. You'll just have to take the loss and hope less of them spawn next time, so you can at least do something about them. The only way to make the instant kill spam strategy compatible for newspaper zombies is to include Tallnut for the exclusive purposes of only blocking the newspaper zombies after breaking their newspaper. You still have to hope that they come cluttered in the same row, so one Tallnut can deal with them all at once. Otherwise, you may have a slight problem in trying to get multiple Tallnuts. If you get past the early game with Tallnuts, then congratulations, you still have two more flags ahead of you. From this point on, you need to keep spamming instant kills. In particular, a lot of Doom Shrooms, and a whole lot of Tallnuts. Your main source of damage is your Doom Shroom, so just make sure you keep planting it and protect yourself with Tallnuts. Unfortunately, sometimes, your Tallnut doesn't even recharge fast enough anyways to let you get enough of them to block off the newspaper zombies. They plow right through and you lose. What's even more annoying than that? Leatherheads. There were no basic zombies in 6-6, so now we also have to deal with this stupid, fast speed, can't be blocked zombie. That being said, it's nowhere near as annoying as the jalapeno zombies which are a spicy addition to this level. Okay, without jalapeno zombie shenanigans, the absence of catapult zombies and where only gargantuars can crush garlics, this level offers a much more easy time with getting sun. Even if we are using the same strategy as in 6-6, the difficulty this time comes from knowing when to use your instant kills more than efficiently using them. You should be using your blover whenever possible after the first flag in the correct lane to push back letterheads and gargantuars that completely ignore garlics and tallnuts as blockers. You also need to be extremely careful regarding any newspaper zombies because you will completely lose if you don't have a Tallna to block them after a Doom Shroom. And good luck to you if you want to try this extremely difficult level as well.
And with that, that's the final wave. And one Doom Shrew, that's this level over. Gargantuars would like to have a word. You may or may not have noticed, but Gargantuars can throw their imp no matter how far they are, so they can directly throw an imp into your house. I could have simply planted a Lover to push back the Gargantuar before I used Doomshroom to win with my leftover 3000 Sun, but just one bad play is all it takes to lose the game. So, unfortunately, I did have to replay the level all over again. Even then, it was way too close for comfort as I took this 50-50 chance to beat the level. Anyways, we beat this level. Hopefully, your luck isn't as terrible as mine, you could have this easier than I did. With Doomstream spamming behind us, let's move on to level 6-9. Level 6-9! Nice. So, what's the deal here? Bucketheads, pole vaulters, catapults, bigger zombies, ladder zombies, and bucketheads screen or squash zombies. Not too bad, I think. The level has pole vaulters, so obviously, I'm going to bring in tall nuts. Oh, but I wouldn't be talking about them first thing if it actually worked in the first place. The new problem this level are the Buckethead Zombies. Any Buckethead Zombie variant costs us a fortune to deal with, leaving us with not much sun to work with against Pole Vaulters. That includes the Pumpkin Zombie, which heals up the Pole Vaulters, and they don't even die to do a Doom Shroom, making them extremely frustrating. Or, the classic old early game target zombie ruining your day casually by just dropping a gargantuar on your plants in the middle of the board. Alternatively, dropping a letterhead in the middle of the board so starfruits don't even have enough time to kill it, especially in the only row without a roof cleaner. And again, dropping two casual gargantuars against your two starfruits. These zombies are absolutely fair and balanced. I see absolutely no problem in this level. Oh yes, and it can also just throw its imp straight into the chimney because of how our starfruits are placed here. Skill issue? I think so. Hopefully, your luck isn't as bad as mine, and you can beat this level. My luck in this level was absolutely crooked. Even in the winning attempt, I had to deal with a wave 2 target zombie. And also, two more pumpkin zombies that followed. By some miracle, my two mana shrooms survived and were able to actually stop their infiltration. Then, after the first flag, let's all hope that pole vaulters simply don't go in the rows where we don't have tall nuts. It's a skill issue on your part if you can't avoid that issue in my opinion. And yes, I also happen to skillfully not have to go against any regular catapult zombies, so all the catapult zombies just targeted my frontline tall nuts. That's called absolute skill. I think you get it at this point. These levels are pretty much already at such high difficulty on the difficulty scale, the only way to make these levels worse is introducing such RNG elements. Otherwise, you should beat this level with the strategy I'm showing here. Using Starfruits as our main source of damage, Lantern to double that, and Magnus Shrooms to counter Bucketheads. Level 610. We're back in daytime, this isn't a conveyor belt level, and there's only basic zombies? Wait, and also 5,000 sun to work with. This has got to be some kind of joke. We're back in daytime to fight Zomboss in the Choose Your Seeds format. However, this version of the Zomboss is different to the two previous versions in Bruno Mode Regular and EX. First things first, Zomboss has full health in this level. In Bruno Mode Regular and EX, it has just half the health so it will be at least twice as hard to kill. And if you remember how we beat the Zomboss those two times, we used Jalapeno since it dealt 5 times more damage when planted on the ninth column. It doesn't have this ability anymore. This means we have to actually deal all the damage to Zomboss. This is going to be much more interesting. So interesting in fact, this level took about a casual 5 hours to beat. You have a very limited amount of options in this level even with 10 seed slots. You need sunflowers and flower pots, obviously, because this is a roof level. Ice room, coffee bean, and jalapeno are also basically necessary here to defend any of the Zomboss's fireball or ice ball attacks. That leaves you with 5 more remaining slots to choose from. 
It depends on how much you want to play this level out. Do you want more cost efficiency with Plantern, or more variety on instant kills? The trick is finding a balance. You can't counter every zombie ideally, because you're essentially going against every zombie that the Zomboss can deploy. Plus, Ice Room and Jalapeno won't do much because their cooldowns are just about as long as each cycle of the Zomboss launching a Fireball or Ice Ball attack. This actually makes Zombonis probably the hardest zombie to beat this level. Melonpold basically never kills Zombonis in time because it starts two tiles further than usual with it coming out of Zomboss. And Jalapeno can't even save you because you have to save it for the Zomboss's Ice Ball attack. So, either you lose all your plants or your plants get frozen. There's no better alternative. And yeah, this is slightly problematic, isn't it? I can't even plant more Bellampult since they get instantly frozen. There's nothing to do about this. So, if Melonpults don't do enough damage, Starfruits should be a better option, since they can do lots of damage and theoretically, it should be great damage against Zomboss as well. The main problem with that is Starfruit was never programmed to even see Zomboss in the first place, so if all the zombies are dead, Starfruit just does nothing. The second problem is that because Starfruits are slow recharging this mod, a single camper van will basically end the game on the spot by destroying nearly half your defense. Sure, a single camper van isn't that bad, you can always replant your starfruits. Oh wait, yes, Zomboss can just throw another one, because he just picks one up from somewhere? Additionally, Zomboss can also summon a Jack in the Box Bungie variant to finish off any of your plants, so I'm pretty certain Umbrella Leaf is mandatory if you want to stand a chance. But I suppose you lose even more sun from using Melon Pults if Zomboss throws a camper van, and this attack is completely unavoidable and unpredictable. I've tried so many different strategies on this one level, and it mostly is just Melon Pulse having too low damage to deal with all these zombies. I tried this rip-off Winter Melon strategy by using Snow Peas, but it really is just inefficient and not worth it, because they are extremely vulnerable. One Zomboni and, oops, Snow Peas are frozen. If you wonder what Colonel Pulse may do, they're even worse than Melon Pulse when it comes to damage, so don't bother trying this yourself. It's not even worth it to sacrifice roof cleaners to restrict where Zomboss can spawn in zombies. If you try to do that, it only puts more strain onto Melon Pults that they can't handle. And no, you can't just cheese it by sacrificing 4 roof cleaners to then use Gloom Shroom and cheese all the remaining zombies that go in one lane. I didn't even bother trying this strategy because obviously Zombonis exist and will completely deny any close range plants this level, so that's not an option. This level is undeniably the most difficult level of the entire 6th world of Bruno Mode EX+, and good luck to you attempting to beat this true fight against Dr. Zomboss himself. Here is the winning attempt and the keys to success. First, let's talk about plant selection. You should be using Melon Pult, Planter, Umbrella Leaf, Potato Mine, and Squash as the 5 non-mandatory plants. Technically speaking, 
Umbrella Leaf is probably mandatory regardless of your strategy because Catapult Zombies have infinite health and they prevent Jack in the Box Bungees. Melon Pole and Plantern is the only way to actually do enough damage on the roof, and Starfruits don't even target Zomboss when it comes to attacking, as previously mentioned. In the early game, you want to copy my exact opening line of placing Planterns and Umbrella Leaves in those exact positions, and make sure to get a lot of Sunflowers. Make sure to keep pre-planting your Ice Shrooms to stock them up in case you need them later on the level, and activate them as need be if Zomboss shoots Fireballs. If Zomboss doesn't shoot Fireballs, you end up getting extra spare Ice Shrooms this way. Potato Mine and Squash are, in my opinion, the bread and butter of this level. You absolutely need them to mitigate the zombie variants in this level. I'm talking about the zombies that your Melon Pulse struggle against. Those are Zombonis, Football Zombies, Gargantuars, and Newspaper Zombies. Zombonis are the most dangerous since they can freeze your plant on the 4th column even if Potato Mine kills them on the 5th. Don't use Squash against Zombonis since it gets frozen. For that particular reason, Squash should always be used before Potato Mine if both are off cooldown if you're not targeting a Zomboni. Alternatively, if you got two Ice Shrooms on the lawn pre-planted, you can activate one of them to stall out an entire cycle of Zomboss spawns. Always have one available against the Fireballs. Keeping the Melon Pulse alive is your number one priority. If a Chocolate Pogo Zombie takes a Roof Cleaner, leave the row as is. Don't dig up the Melon Pulse or replace some flowers. It's the most beneficial to just keep your Melon Pulse even if a Roof Cleaner was used in its lane, because that opens up a lane for Melon Pulse to attack Zomboss, reducing the length of the fight. This level is definitely beatable legitimately as I did so right here, but it involves a lot of chance and you really need not too many Zombonis to spawn as they are extremely devastating. And thank god, this dreaded level is finally over, and we've beaten Brutamote EX+. Plus. Today we are starting on the 7th world? Yes, the journey is still not over as this world was added on its latest version 1.2.4, introducing several balance and aesthetic changes and bug fixes. World 7 changes the rules of the entire game, introducing exclusive variants that make it the toughest world. You start with 200 sun instead of 150, so you know it's gotta be terrible. So, for level 7-1, we are in Zen Garden, but you need flower pots to plant anything else and you start with none of them. Yep, none. This means even more micromanaging to position your flower pots. You literally do not have enough flower pots to get past the early game, or you'll have to sacrifice on some of the sun production. So, Doom Shroom seems pretty essential for this level. Alongside this, amongst the first changes from before is the Starfruit nerf. It no longer pierces through the flat roof section and also fires at a slower rate than before. The Pole Vaulter now also has a new variant exclusive to World 7, the Wildlife Crossing variant. When it jumps, it does this. Instead of leaping over only one tile, it jumps two tiles now, allowing them to more easily infiltrate our defenses. It still makes a gravestone on the tile behind where it lands. And for obvious reasons, you can clearly see that we are struggling a lot by the fact we had to spend two Doom Shrooms before the first flag even came. Oh, but if you thought that was bad... <coughs> yep, 5 Bucketed Flag Zombies. In World 7, every flag will spawn a Bucketed Flag Zombie on every row, and they each drain sun as well, making you lose 5 times more sun than usual. Naturally, when you have an impossible early game paired with some zombie with an impossible amount of health to kill, we say hello to the dump strat yet again. To get enough sun to plant sufficient plants for our survival past the first lag, the dump strategy makes use of sacrificing four lawnmowers early on and garlics to protect rows of sunflowers. Unfortunately, there's one thing I forgot to account for when I used the same strategy again. Pole vaulters can leap over garlics, creating a grave in its spot and rendering it utterly useless. This makes our garlics more expensive to maintain, but daytime makes that less of a trouble. Doom Shrooms fall asleep during day, allowing us to stock them up. But of course, now cost us an extra slot because of Coffee Bean. 
overall, it's a benefit because we can use more of them. Make sure you can afford Coffee Bean when the Flag Zombies come in to kill them as fast as possible with a Doom Troop to prevent your sun raining. Flag Zombies also have more health and deal more damage, so it survives the Doom Shroom too. So thank god it's daytime because we need to immediately Doom Shroom again to kill them. As for the rest of the level, Ladder Zombies are the main threat aside from Pole Vaulters, jumping over Garlics. They are immune to slowdown from Blover, and the Shovel Zombie also requires an immediate answer if it comes from one of your Sunflower Rows. You can stall it out using an Ice Shroom and a Doom Shroom later, but you will most definitely lose at least a few Sunflowers because of the delay from Coffee Bean. Sure enough, Cherry Bomb is a better answer to not lose Sunflowers, but you need it more for emergency situations like target zombies absolutely steamrolling your defenses. And there's also another question of whether you should even use Cherry Bomb because the extra upkeep in Garlics really bites you when you see you don't have as much sun to work with towards the end of the level. And to beat the final wave, you also need enough sun to plant 2 Doom Shrooms and 2 Coffee Beans. And you need the sun before it even comes because it will get drained instantly. Unfortunately, not even Doom Shroom Spam can save us very easily this time around. And even if you have enough sun, I might not be on your side, since that second Doom Shroom is also necessary to be pre-planted before the final wave comes. How to achieve exactly that while surviving against the onslaught of zombies before the second flag is certainly a question that we will have to answer ourselves. I tried sacrificing Ice Shroom in exchange for Twin Sunflower to get more sun. That did not go in our favor, because you then end up losing to ladder zombies without sufficient solid. And playing this level was certainly not without mishaps that I still make even after playing so much of Brutal Mode EX+. So, is there one true solution to this level? Yes, that is the one where you don't need to do shrooms. Instead of using Ice Shroom, Potato Mine is our saving grace here. We use Potato Mine as an additional squash to counter stray ladder zombies, so we don't lose to them even without Ice Shroom. The trick is, Doom Shroom with one shot all the zombies in the final wave, except the flag zombies. Then, we use Cherry Bombs to kill 3 more, Squash, and Potato Mine for the final 2. You only need all of those plants off cooldown to beat the final wave, easily winning, given you didn't screw up the instant spam mid-level. An easy win, as I say, it only took 80 minutes. As for level 7-2, oh no. Zombonies and a new variant of the newspaper zombie. Surely this wouldn't go terribly wrong at all, right? If you thought the previous level was already bad, this level took more than 25 attempts, about 2 hours to solve. First of all, newspaper zombies are back and as stupid as they ever were. Let one get through and oops, you lose the game because it kills half your sun producers. And second of which, the new newspaper zombie variant causes an issue with us using starfruit. Just take a look at what it does after its newspaper is broken. Yes, it survived an entire taller and then also survived the potato mine. And no, it has nothing to do with the gramophone zombie next to it. The almanac zombie increases in 15 health every time its almanac is damaged. Unfortunately, Starfruit does damage and takes off one hit point because of its piercing mechanic. The almanac has 300 health, meaning the base zombie has an additional health of 300 times 15 equals to 4500, equivalent to 3 instant kills. To circumvent this health adding issue, Chompers eat the Almanac Zombie whole before its angry face, so it serves as the perfect counter. Or is it? It really isn't once you look at how many zombies get sent at you. Chompers are severely outnumbered for how expensive they are. Really doesn't help us much here, does it? 
An elegant solution is Scaredy Shroom and Walnut Spam to block off the zombies and give our Chompers ample time to get back in shape to devour more zombies. This works perfectly until the first flag, which the problem isn't with the bucketed zombies this time because Chompers also one-shot them, but the zombie density is too high, so the Horde just plows right through your defense and you ain't winning against this. So what if we use Pumpkin instead? It's actually very nice against the Horde of Zombies, because now we have them to explode off the swarms of zombies. Unfortunately, that does not account for the fact that Newspaper Zombie Hens will break loose if they get exploded before their angry phase, and therefore lose you the game. I then tried Fume Troom to fend out the Horde. Tall Nuts were used to instead to blockade Newspaper Zombies this time because we are using Fume Troom. It actually worked out pretty well, until Zomboni started coming and freezing up our Chompers. Eventually, the strategy was a failure because Zombonis wreak havoc on close-range plants. We are simply trapped in a dilemma. If we choose to use splash damage plants, they simply don't do enough damage against Zombonis for us to ever reliably kill them in time. If we choose to not use splash damage plants, we can't beat the swarm that is off the first flag. Oh boy, <laughs> this is going to be so bad. Eventually, we have to come back looking for help from our lord and savior Doom Shroom once again. But hold on, how are you going to get enough Doom Shrooms to kill all the Zombonis? The strategy changes that we have to use for the early game. Instead of using masses of potato mines and squashes or Doom Shrooms, we have to simply stall. To stall, all we're really doing is just playing out garlics to force zombies into rows and then blowing them back with Blover until they die. This is absolutely important because you don't want Almanac zombies to bite into Tall Nuts, which increases their base zombies' health. I also brought in Chomper, which is actually very important because it's a fast recharge plant that can kill Letterheads without activating the Newspaper Zombies Rage Mode. With sufficient stalling, the two Doom Shrooms on the first flag will kill all the Newspaper Zombies from before. This also saves using Doom Shroom by not using a single one before the first flag. Maximize your Doom Shroom value by Doom Shrooming a bit after the flag zombies appear so you can meet the next wave threshold to get the next wave spawn as soon as possible. That way, your second Doom Shroom can hit another wave of Zombonis and you waste less Doom Shrooms given how limited they are. If a wave doesn't have any Zombonis, then do not spend your Doom Shroom and simply spam Blover to stall newspaper zombies out. A Zomboni coming in any of your Sunflower lanes is also easily counterable, since Chompers have just enough time to eat a Zomboni hole before it gets frozen. If a wave has only one Zomboni, then you can get away by just using Jalapeno. If the wave after also has Zombonis, or more than one Zomboni, spend Doom Shroom to kill them. With all this planning and efficient use of instant kills, you should save enough Doom Shrooms to kill the final wave and beat the level. Seven free, we are now in the Aquatic Garden. What on earth is this balloon zombie variant here? As we load into the level, you can see it's nighttime as mushrooms aren't asleep and the three middle rows of water. With only two ground lanes, the letterhead zombies in the early game meant ground lanes were just completely guaranteed to have no long wars remaining. When we're trying to defend using Fume Shroom, we simply cannot do enough damage against letterheads and quite easily lose to them without spending an instant kill on them. I changed up my strategy to be better equipped against letterheads. Using some flowers instead of sun shrooms made more sense since we already had 200 sun to begin with. I tried using Gar like this level since the ground lanes are next to no other ground lanes. You end up getting zombies slowed down by constantly biting garlic. What's more interesting is... Garlics have an extremely low chance to hypnotize zombies when bitten. Normally, this chance is near irrelevant. But here, we can make zombies indefinitely chew the garlic until hypnotized. 
The perfect scenario is this. A hypnotized Buckethead will stop the letterhead in its tracks, giving us time to prepare for their infiltration. Unfortunately, a squash was still needed because of the pumpkin zombie in the row next door. I was going to use Blowvers to pop the balloons off balloon zombies, but the flag zombies came, so I had zero sun against them now. So let's just use our lawnmowers if we have them. Okay, it appears that this was our first time losing to Balloon Zombies in Bruno Modi X+. Balloon Zombies are immune to lawnmowers now, unlike in vanilla. I'm not quite sure why I forgot to bring in Cattail despite it being very overtuned in this mod. As I can remind you, they have a 3% chance to shoot shots that deal 10 times more damage than usual. A Gargantuar actually spawned in the water because a target zombie can summon a bungee ambush for any zombie, even in the water lane. However, something else interesting happened. The Imp now also has a variant that appears one third of the time. It has significantly more health, as much as a bucket or screen door has. It also instantly crushes any plant it touches. Without a Doom Shroom to spare after being forced to use it against the target zombie, this is just a loss. If you thought that target zombie was bad, there's also a really bad sequence this attempt. First of which, our Tangle Kelp and Doom Shroom are on cooldown, so we end up having no answer to this Lilypad Snorkel Zombie, and unfortunately, that's just a Force Pool Cleaner. Then, two bungee ambushes occur one after another, with the second one spawning a... In World 7, Football Zombies also have an extra strong new variant. The Giga Football Zombie has 5,300 health, almost as much as a Giga Gargantuar. They also receive 40% less damage whenever not eating a plant, but receive 25% more whenever eating. Without blocking it with plants, it has an equivalent health of 8,833. That amount of health survives 4 instant kills and requires 5 to be killed. So, it makes a lot of sense that we did not stand a chance against this zombie here. After several fails, I refined the strategy a bit more. By refining, I mean, I just copied the instant kill spam strategy again, but included some aquatic plants. Instead of sacrificing lawnmowers of garlics, we obviously can't use garlic. So, Cattail acts as both balloon defense and early game protection against stray zombies. We don't want plants in here since Cattails are merely for the early game and balloon zombies. Hence, Cherry Bomb is better here to counter the bucket of flag zombies. Just Cattail is enough for the balloon zombie variant. The Cloud Zombie, instead of dropping down after being attacked by spikes, stays in the air and tanks for more hits than usual. Tangle Kelp is pretty mandatory to kill Lilypad Snorkel Zombies in my books. Just put them behind tall nuts to stock up Tangle Kelps and ensure safety in all water lanes. And for the rest of the game, simply Doom Shroom will eliminate half the waves on its own. To clean up Buckethead Flag Zombies post Doom Shroom, Cattails will do that work for us. As for Jalapeno Zombies, they're the worst in this level because of their insanely high hit points. Half of the Jalapeno Zombies won't be clipped in the Doom Shroom explosions. This is where Cherry Bomb, Squash, and Potato Mine come in and fill in those gaps to try and limit the damage they can do. If there are any more other threats, Glover should simply buy us enough time to get one of your instant kills back. Save a Doom Shroom for the final wave, and that concludes this level pretty easily without much more hassle. If you are asking how there are vases here, I'll explain more in the future. Level 7 4. We're still in the Aquatic Garden, this time with Gargantuars, Screen Door Zombies, Dolphin Riders, and Gatling P Zombies. The loadout I decided to go with is the exact same loadout as the level previous. It really is just unfortunately necessary to run 4 instant kill plants in your loadout. The early game, the exact same. The mid game, you just do the whole same thing again with Doom Shroom spamming every other wave and Blover back frets. This time, we're using our instant kills, the cherry bombs, potato mines, squashes, and tangle kelp to eliminate Gatling P zombies. They do a ton of damage against our tall nuts, so we need them dead as soon as possible so we don't lose our tall nuts too quickly as they don't recharge quite fast enough to replenish. The whole board will get infested with Gatling P zombies after the second flag, and lots of mass destruction after our tall nut gets broken. Hopefully, the sun you got before that point should be enough to suffice for the rest of the instant kills you need to spend, especially that Doom Shroom on the final wave. I don't see how else you are ever killing the bucket of flag zombies, because no plant in existence does enough damage to deal with these absolutely large hordes of zombies. A preface that 7-5 has skipped because of a glitch in the level that prevents me from beating it. 
which brings us to Seven Six, where we are brought back to the rooftop. So, what's so bad about this? Hello there. This level brings us back to the Conan Pea Shooter Zombies. Pretty sure you know the strategy that we are essentially forced to use as for dealing with these guys again. So again, yes, again, we use garlics to protect two rows of our sunflowers first, and we sacrifice all our roof cleaners to get a jump start on our economy pretty nicely. However, there is another zombie this level which prevents the strategy from working. In comes Michael Jackson. Garlic will not stop him from spawning back up dancers in our sunflower rows and chewing them right up with no way to stop them apart from doom shroom. Because if you remember, once Michael Jackson dies, the backup dancer behind him transforms into a new Michael Jackson. So, we're going to need something else here. I thought, since it's daytime now, unlike in previous Conan Pea Shooter zombie levels like 6-6, why not just play Tall Nut Spam to infinitely stall out the early game zombies? Well, that's because you ain't stalling out zombies since, one, you end up spending so much on planting tall nuts, you can still never afford any actual attackers, so the strategy is futile. And moreover, these tall nuts aren't particularly great against the angry dancers which dance right past them because, well, they are angry dancers. Also, the Wildlife Crossing Pole Vaulter jumps two tiles, so a tall nut is completely unable to block them off, just like the pole vaulters from the original Bruder mode. So, is a bust. The other problem is just bucketed zombies in this level. Target zombies make it extremely difficult to pull off the instant kill spam strategy with all the buff zombies that spawns. Last time, I told you to wait for me to explain where the phases came from, so just take a look at what the target zombie spawns right here. Bruh. Catapult Zombies new variant in World 7 now lobs phases and instantly kills the plant it targets and replaces it with a phase. Perfectly fair and balanced. If you want to plant in the tile with a vase again, you have to break it open, and it contains literally any zombie you can have in the vase. By that, I mean Giga Gargantuars are in these things. And the worst part is, they're actually in this level themselves, so we need to deal with these guys for the entirety of after the first like as well. Yeah, I, I don't know, maybe you go try dealing with this catapult zombie that one-shots your plant and puts a Giga Gargantuar in the spot of your tall nut. This level is an absolute pain in the ass to beat with a combination of the most unfair zombies like Conan Pea Shooters, Target Zombies, and Catapult Zombies. Things like just the first few waves suddenly spawning a few Gargantuars are simply impossible to defend, you better pray that RNG Jesus is on your side. Remember, you still need to have two Doomstream stocked when the first flag hits so you can double Doomstream the flag zombies, which can steal all your sun within seconds. If you only have one, the run is just completely dead. There's also another issue, which is the cost of maintenance to even have just garlic lanes of sunflowers is so difficult, because of pole vaulters. They will consistently leap over your garlic and destroy them on the spot with a grave, and it just costs too much to consistently replant garlics and blow over pole vaulters back. This attempt, I actually got really lucky as I was able to maintain a good amount of sun and carry on that advantage towards the second half of the level. But just remember Murphy's Law, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. I completely forgot that if the same Michael Jackson summons for the third time, it will spawn a bungee ambush. So I doomshroomed as a Michael Jackson summoned a bungee ambush that consisted of, you guessed it, two newspaper zombies. I panicked, and uh, yeah, rest is history. Eventually, I had to change from using tall nut stalling. Even though I could stall out Conan Pea Shooter zombies, my sunflowers were still not very safe against backup dancers. That's when I pulled out the twin sunflower. Although being much less cost efficient, it's safer as we can plant them towards the back of our lineup. So even though yes, they are three times more expensive, it's worth it, because they're not getting chewed up by pole vaulters, backup dancers, or zombies from bungee ambushes every minute. The strategy here is basically identical to the ones we used previously. Stall out the early game with blowvers and cherry bombs to save up two doomshrooms for the first flag. Making sure all your sunflowers are protected is important to beat the level. Use garlics to push zombies into the middle rows for cherry bomb value during doomshrooms downtime. Repeatedly spam blowover onto pole vaulters that jump over garlics, and make sure you bring grave buster and simply hope that catapult zombies won't spawn too often. I definitely lucked out on this one because it took me about 30 minutes after I figured out I needed to use Twin Sunflower to beat this level because my winning attempt only had one catapult zombie between the two flags, making it significantly easier. 
And as with all the final waves of every level, make sure you have a Doom Shroom and a Cherry Bomb at the ready to blast off all the flag zombies, then clean up the rest. After 2 hours, this level is finally over as we move on from the terrible design of what is Conan to be Shooter Zombies. 7-7 brings us back to nighttime pool. Because this level doesn't have fog, for whatever reason, it's a free flag level. Thankfully, the early game is actually quite easy since it only has basic zombies and walnut zombies. Basically, nothing special will happen in the early game, which is a relief for us to farm up lots of sun early on and get a lot of cattails in preparation for the upcoming onslaught. This level has jalapeno zombies, squash zombies, jack in the box zombies, and digger zombies all of which threaten to charge at your plants and kill them. Sounds like these zombies are not that big of a deal, but take a look at Jack in the Box zombies now. What? In World 7, the variants of Jack in the Box zombies gain an additional special ability. When they don't self-detonate and get killed, they will act as a decoy, not actually threatening the game, but distracts plants and soaks up damage. This ability makes cattails fare much worse against them since cattails will get distracted targeting the headless decoy until they walk off the screen. The other big bad this level are gargantuars. Thankfully, they're actually not that hard to kill since we have puff stream spam as well as cattail having ridiculously high damage. The first to second flag is relatively straightforward with just cattail and instant kill spam, but the problem begins after that point. After the second flag, just like in previous jalapeno zombie levels, these get completely spammed at you after the second flag, making it nearly impossible to stop all of them at once. And slowly but surely, they will wipe out all your plants one row at a time for whichever row you are unable to deal with that one particular time, leading to your eventual demise. The solution is actually not complex at all, and in fact the strategy we need to use is already correct. It's just how we utilize these plants makes the difference between a win and a loss. Against jalapeno zombies, as soon as we see them, we just want to spend an instant kill on them. Don't take any chances or try to greed on getting extra stun, it's not worth trying. Simply use your cherry bomb, squash, potato mine, or jalapeno on them the moment they enter the view, which should safely prevent some producers getting demolished. Doomstream cycling should probably get you through the level to chop down the HP of Gorgantuar's this level, so just do the blower stalling strategy again. And there we go! Just not taking any chances and playing it extra safe, you can survive the jalapeno zombies as well as a bit of luck of course, for them not to explode immediately. 7-8 is actually the easiest level out of all the World 7 levels. First of all, the zombies in this level do fairly linear things that do not have some RNG element tied to it. The zombies in this level are newspapers, screen doors, pogos, footballs, ton of zombies, and ladder zombies. First, the early game this level is definitely the easiest out of all the levels of World 7. It's a pool level, so we only need two garlics to divert zombies to two ground lanes for the early game. After sacrificing two lawnmowers, we have a simple solution to the early game. Because there's only two rows to defend after garlic, we just plant tunnels to block off any zombies. Because the only zombies that can appear in the water are basics and tall zombies, cattails are basically completely safe, allowing us to spam them to our heart's desire. Cattails are essentially all the damage we need, as they will deal with pogos and letterheads as well since they will retarget to them when they're sneaking past our plants. The rest of the damage that needs to be made up, well, we just spam Doom Shroom and it's enough to cut down the health of all the zombies for Cattail to clean up. Newspaper Zombie won't get killed by a Doom Shroom, but we're still constantly planting more tunnels to block them off, so make sure you remember to keep planting those. And as for Ladder Zombies, well, one Doom Shroom removes all ladders at once, so it's basically impossible for ladders to let too many zombies through when we are stocking up Doom Shrooms. Shovel Zombies will be easily solved by us using Blow for Stall until Doom Shroom, which is a foolproof method of stopping them. Just Squash, which also counters them. And with that, that's this level over. With 7 8 out of the way, we're in nighttime, and now we have. Oh no! Yes, the first level where Giga Gargantuars are introduced as naturally spawning zombies. It's a nighttime level, so we also have less sun than usual. For the early game, I first tried a dumb strategy with Hypno Shroom, since Hypno Shroom is now actually buffed and better than before, although costing 25 more sun. First, we can push all the zombies into two rows again with Garlics, and Hypnoshroom are great here since hypnotizing a target zombie will not spawn a bungee ambush. 
Moreover, when any zombie eats a Hypno Shroom, it now gains a Buckethead if possible, providing reliably sturdy defense in exchange regardless of whichever zombie gets hypnotized. However, the excellent early game collapses at the first lag. Gatling P zombies are in this level, so the garlics die very quickly, exposing our sunflowers to Gatling P zombies, which will very easily shred up all your sun producers in moments notice. And before you know it, you have splurged basically all your sun on protecting your sunflowers only for them to still die, and you ran out of sun too quickly to afford any more defenses. Next attempt, I set up a tallnut wall instead, which is very effective since we can still mitigate target zombie variants by using Hypno Shroom, and these tallnuts can take a beating against Gatling P zombies. Umbrella Leaf is also pretty necessary this level to prevent the catapult zombies from instantly killing our tallnuts or sunflowers, so make sure to plant those before the first flag comes. We can pretty much survive against everything, but Giga Gargantuars are just so much sturdy compared to regular Gargantuars. They survive 4 instant kills and still throw Gargantuar imps. They can easily overwhelm us, since it's pretty much impossible to blow over stall 5 rows at once, as it takes double the instant kills to deal with these guys compared to normal Gargantuars. Plus, it's even more problematic now in World 7 that we also need to spend instant kills on imps, since they instantly stomp any plant they touch half the time and have so much health. That's when it occurred to me that I've forgotten about the most niche plant in the game that was designed as a counter exclusively to Giga Gargantuars, Marigold. Marigold is an instant use plant which slashes the health of zombies down, it affects in a 3 times 3 area to 25%, which makes it basically just the worst cherry bomb against everything. That is, of course, except Giga Grand Wars, because now in fact you're dealing the equivalent of 3 instant kills at once. I replaced Hypno Shroom in favor of Marigold, which means we will need to deal with Bungie ambushes in the early game now. Thankfully, Marigold as a soft counter to Bungie ambushes will do fine, as most things would just die to Puffstream anyways if you slash their health down to 25%. And in fact, Marigold is extremely effective. Just one Marigold and one Cherry Bomb will eliminate all Giga Gargantuars in the targeted area, so we often only need to stall one or two rows of Giga Gargantuars with Blowvers, making the instant spam strategy viable. Another benefit of using Tallnut is that they can actually soak up multiple hits from Gargantuars as well as squash zombies, allowing them to soak several hits before your blow for recharges. Just apply everything we've learned about instant spamming from previous levels to deal with flag zombies here, and that should be 7-9, not too bad even with Giga Gargantuars, done. After 7-9 is done, we move on to 7-10, which in this level, you get 500,000 sun to start the level with. And, uh, there's only basic zombies. You know what's coming, right? 710 is a boss fight. We get a flag before the boss comes in to set up a defense of our choosing. Sun production is irrelevant given you have 500,000 sun. It's basically impossible to run out. And here's the boss, a 150,000 health newspaper zombie boss. First of which, he changed the time to nighttime and made every single plant on the board fall asleep. You can see that all our seed slots were changed to a custom preset selection, giving us two mega coffee beans that wake up plants in a 3x3 free free area. The boss also spawned a crap ton of, I don't know how to describe, a bunch of zombies is all I can say. They are balanced, and it looks like we have already lost, only 30 seconds in. Don't be fooled by the fact that you have 500,000 sun. This level is actually incredibly tough, and requires a ton of micromanaging. So what's actually going on here? The boss's first ability is the Black Countess here. This is the ability which changes the scene to nighttime and makes all your plants fall asleep. It also simultaneously chains your seed packets to a custom 10 slot preset for the level. You get this weird sprout which transforms into any plant and all these other plants shown here. This is the true final boss of the game as this one can truly spawn every zombie that it can spawn, all the zombies, diggers, balloons, flag zombies, basically anything. The boss's next ability is the White Hole, a white tomorrow is waiting for us. This changes the scene back to daytime, which there you get a whole new preset of plants and wakes up all plants except mushrooms, but removes a random amount of slots each time. Embraced by the flames of darkness, it disappears, is the next ability of the boss. It can instantly wipe out a row of plants using the flames of darkness. Its next ability is to summon an absolute horde of bungee zombies, always in these exact same tiles and in this pattern. And yes, it can spawn all bungee variants as well. These are all its abilities for its first phase. Yes, it has different abilities according to the phase that it is, but for now, that's all it is going to do against us. 
It doesn't sound very threatening, but the first problem is how are we even supposed to kill all these zombies that edit spawning to start damaging it? That's the first problem we need to solve. And on our second attempt, even though we survived much longer, we actually just died to a gargantua throwing an imp into our house directly. So we need to analyze how to beat this level with the two preset loadouts, because it's virtually impossible to keep our starting lineup alive with the boss breathing fire all over our plants. The first thing that I realized is that every time the boss activates the Black Hunt's ability, it will spawn a crap ton of zombies. So the first step is to Doom Shroom and Ice Shroom instantly, since that ability actually refreshes all our cooldowns to nothing. Of course, we also need to use the coffee beans on our plants to wake them up from sleeping face. Daytime is a really important phase to aid in making a strong defense. Daytime is the only time you get access to plant turn, which are super important to double the attack speed of our plants. The other daytime exclusive is Grave Buster, which we must plant a ton immediately, to resolve all the gravestones as a result of pole vaulters throughout the level. Noticing all of these is not enough to beat the boss. In fact, we haven't even gotten to phase 2 with just what we're doing right now, spamming plants all over the board. Yes, I said phase 2, because there's actually more than two phases of the boss we are yet to experience. The next attempt is where I realized the way to break through all of this. In daytime, we gain access to a yellow scarity room. It's actually a completely different plant I didn't even notice. It is now in fact a magnifying grass. The intention of the plant is we're supposed to be using them to whittle down the hit points off the boss by manually kicking, and very much so, with them, we do massive damage against the boss, knocking it down to phase 2. In phase 2, the boss holds a Gatling P-head and gains an ability to start spawning in illusions, gigantic sized zombies that appear to have a ludicrous amount of hit points but actually just disappear after a few seconds to block off the plants from attacking the boss. Also notice, our Grave Buster and Planter are now no longer available to us during daytime and they have been replaced by Gold Blooms, basically just plants that do nothing. In this phase, it also summons a bunch of gravestones next to it to prevent you from being able to plant Cherry Bomb to damage it. Shortly thereafter, it also has another ability to summon a Grave Ambush from the 10 gravestones consisting of Basics, Conets, and Bucketed Zombies. It will also start shooting melons all over the screen, killing the majority of your plants as they do massive damage against everything. It can also switch it back to nighttime, and now our Sprout and one of our Mega Coffee Beans are missing, meaning we can only wake up half the plants, making it significantly harder to handle. Its Flames of Darkness now also affects two rows instead of just one, instantly wiping out 40% of your defense, leaving you to scramble away to defend two completely undefended rows. After a while, it will switch scenes again, but this time he's real angry. The boss starts spawning any zombie from the gravestones, and all sorts of zombies will just completely ruin what is remaining of your defense. Catapult zombies, especially that put vases in spot of your plants, makes it immensely frustrating to win because we simply do not have Umbrella Leaf to block them. And quickly, we have completely lost this attempt. I will quickly skip to phase 2 of the fight directly since there's no point in showing phase 1 again, but basically I tried a few more times and I was still rather unsuccessful. Once the boss starts steamrolling all your plants, there's basically no way to come back from it because the amount of plants you can get slowly trickles down as more and more zombies get spawned. It's just simply not possible to survive against newspaper zombies when you only have like a few plants on the board, and it's too late to try and make a comeback from this dead lost position. So what's the actual key to beating this level? Well, it's to simply focus on hitting the boss as much as you can. Trying to replace the actual plants of our defense is a waste of time. Humans are simply not gods and cannot micromanage everything at once, and it's best to focus on using magnifying grass to keep whittling down the hit points of the boss as fast as possible before everything is completely overrun. Spam click on the magnifying grass to try to get it down to its next phase as soon as possible, and you'll see that it has reached phase 3 once the level progress bar resets. At this phase, it will only be 2 instant kills away from reaching its final form. The sun will be set to 1500 directly, so make sure to use your gold blooms, the sun shrooms, immediately for sun. After the level progress bar is completely filled, it will transform into a regular newspaper zombie with 1500 health and charge towards your house. The best solution to this is just Tallnut, and Tallnut will be able to allow you to safely defend off the boss. And don't break any vases open, because we only need to kill any zombies that are left alive at that moment to beat the true ending of Brooding Mode EX+. That's it for Adventure Mode of Brooding Mode EX+. Next time, we'll be back for the minigame levels in Brooding Mode EX+, which are unsurprisingly even more difficult compared to the ones in Brooding Mode EX, and may even be outright impossible. Remember to subscribe to stay tuned, and thank you to our channel members for supporting the RCCS channel. For now, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.